I may be Marty Levinson, and I may be Rabbi Doug, but either way, you're watching the Northtown News Magazine Show. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Your host, Avi Meyer, and the greatest cameraman of all, Sonny Hirsch. Marty, thank you so much for that wonderful intro. Avi Meyer's here, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine. Thanks to my entire technical crew, Sonny Hirsch, and if you haven't noticed it already, besides for the new background, there's going to be a whole new look because Sonny's gotten us two, not one, count them, but two cameras for this wonderful shoot. This is our special Evanston show. Um, our, our guest today, well, first of all, dial us up on the web, ntnm.org, community policing, caps24.org. Um, and anyway, the, our second guest, Steve Bartable, Evanston Community Media Center, but our first guest is the representative of the 13th District on the Cook County Board, uh, who is a native resident of, who is a native of Evanston, and that is Larry Sufferton. Larry, how are you? Hi, Avi. Good to see you. But I also My do pleasure. represent the 49th and the 50th wards in the city of Chicago. That's correct. So. That's correct. And, and actually, not quite all the 50th. Quickly's got a little bit. He does. I, I basically go up to Arthur. Right. And, and yeah, he's got that everything. Got gerrymandered. <laughs> yes. They got, and, and he also has the Loyola campus. I don't have the Loyola campus, but then he's a professor on the Loyola campus, so it's well, good for me. I didn't know Mike. that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, that's interesting. Um, so there's been lots of activity in the county, definitely. Well, you know, I, I always say when I come on your show that when I got elected, I, I called it stealth government because nobody knew what it was. But we've certainly, we make the front page. Unfortunately, we're not making it for positive issues. Uh, right now, the issue seems to be uh, uh, the controversies around the appointments made by President Todd Stroger. And, uh, you know, I still go out places and everybody stops me and says, why did you encourage us to vote for Todd Stroger? And I did it on this show. And, right. And, and I tell people, I, I encouraged us to, people to vote for Todd Stroger because we need in this society, because of the prevalence of guns, to be anti-gun. And Todd Stroger was, and Tony Pareka is pro-gun. We needed to protect the women's right to choose when you're running a hospital like Stroger Hospital. And Todd Stroger was in favor of that right, and Tony Pareka was opposed to it. And we need to protect and keep away from any kind of hate or discrimination that exists in society. And Tony was anti-gay uh, and lesbian, while Todd was pro-gay and lesbian. And I still think those are reasons why we voted for Todd. I'm a little disappointed in some of these appointments. Mm. We've got a lot of work to do with him. We've got to kind of preserve the next three and a half years. If he keeps doing the things he's doing, he's not going to get reelected, And we'll, we'll have a new whole new crew. But... At this point, well, it's kind of funny because you know, as people who watch the show know, I, I was definitely not for Todd Stroger, but you know what? He has accomplished at least two things I know of. Number one, there is zero unemployment in the Stroger family, and the aver the, the average mean income in that family is beyond belief. <laughs> well, he's done that, and it's been unfortunate because those are things we can't control from the board. We're in a battle now with to try to control the budget. We've asked the state's attorney for an opinion, and. Uh, State's Attorney Devine gave it to us and said that's our power, not his. So we're going to work very hard to try to deal with those kind of uh, uh, of, of issues. And we, you know, we've got issues in the Juvenile Temporary Detention Center still. There's a request by the ACLU for a, uh, a receiver. We hope that that receiver will be appointed. I'm in favor of that. We're looking to see if there's a way to get a receiver appointed for the Health Care Bureau. Uh, we're still working with the sheriff on trying to improve the quality of of, of, of uh, programming at the jail so we can protect this overall community. It, it's a difficult time to be a county official, but it's also a fun time because I'm still I'm working with Mike Quigley. I'm working with Forrest Claypool. We are trying to accomplish things for our constituents. In Springfield, we're working to try to get the 7% extension put into place. Uh, we're working to try and change the age for a juvenile uh, to give uh, people more opportunity who need help when they're young and try to help them avoid that first conviction. So uh, I, I've been having a lot of fun working with the uh, um, delegation that represents us, Senator Silverstein, Senator Schoenberg, Representative Hamos, Representative Osterman, uh, 
uh, in trying to get things done. So, you know, while we've got problems, we are trying to do the right thing. Yeah, but, well, you know, you're talking about self-government. You are a gigantic. It's definitely one of the, the you're what, the third largest governmental body? We, we, well, if we were a state, we'd be the 17th largest state in the union. Okay. And, and we are the second largest county. L.A. County is the only county bigger than us. And remember, in New York, each of the boroughs is their own county. So the, the, there isn't a big county in, in, in the New York City area. But, you know, issues coming up uh, for the summer, I want to encourage people to go out and use the forest preserves. Um, we have some phenomenal opportunities for people to go hiking, to ride their bicycles, to picnic, to just go canoeing. And I, I think people need to understand 68,000 acres of forest preserve land is all within our reach here. I heard a commercial for the state of Michigan the other day saying, come to Michigan, 1,900 acres of state parkland. We got that beat. Stay home. Far. Don't go to Michigan and, 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 and use our forest preserves. And we've got forest preserves very close to us, too. Uh, absolutely. You certainly have a number in your district. Uh, they're all, they're, and they're beautiful. In the north branch of the Chicago River. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm having a good time working with uh, Alderman Moore and, and Stone, who have both been reelected, uh, as we continue to try to find ways to improve the quality of life here for people we represent. Right now, and, and it's very important. It's kind of nice that, that almost all the government and officials in this area do work very well together. Yeah, a absolutely. Our offices are always communicating. We're looking for community events and to be together at and to, to, to make sure that people here get the services they need. I always say that there are three things government should do, and this is what Todd stroger has got to do as president. You've got to make sure that the people know what the services are and that when they get those services, they're given with dignity and the respect that the citizen deserves. Second, you need to protect the morale of your county employees, your governmental employees who are providing that service. You've got to treat them fairly. And third, you've got to have a vision of where you're going to lead this government going into the future. Uh, I've been working with Congresswoman Schakowsky on health care as we try to figure out how do we get, as you know, health care has been a big issue for me up here, how do we get Always more health care in, in into the 49th and 50th Ward so that people up here who are uninsured can feel that they have protection? I mean, it's, it's a terrible thing to have this strong a country and to have some people who are in fear of, of losing everything because they may not have their health. That's a big thing. Now, now, by the way, with the budget the way it is, though, there's no way you're going to be just anything news coming out of the county right now. Well, you know, one of our problems is, I think I've mentioned it before on your show, we've lost $180 million in the last 18 months from the federal government, and that's the effect of the Iraq war. You know, people say, well, the Iraq war isn't really impacting me. It impacts all of us. You don't have to have a child or a friend serving overseas. The way that money is being spent in Iraq is starting to impact our health care system. It's impacting housing programs. It's impacting educational programs. And until we can work with the Congress to try and contain this and stop this bleeding of money into the Iraq and Afghanistan uh, theaters of action, we, we are not going to be able to provide the services for our own citizens. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely, it, it's more than a big problem, and it definitely, it, it needs to stop. Now, I agree with you 100%. That this, first of all, you know, it's one thing to take out Saddam Hussein, but then, you know what, get the hell out of there. I don't know what these guys are doing there. Well, and, and that's the problem. You know, in, in my era when I was in the service, we were fighting a war in Vietnam. We were fighting a war against a country. We knew who the enemy was, yeah. even though sometimes we couldn't distinguish the individuals. We're not fighting a country here. We're fighting a movement. And it's very hard for our troops on the ground to know who's friendly and who's foe. And, and I, these young people, I have nothing but great admiration for the service. You know, they, they go in with, a, with an absolute commitment to public service. And they, they feel they have a mission to try to perform. We've got to get them the tools, but I, I think that the best thing we can do for them is to withdraw them from this situation because oh, no it's question. impossible for them See, to be successful. Speaking of not, not successful. knowing, it would be also nice to have a president who knew his left hand from his right hand, but that's another story. <laughs> uh, well, someday we should talk about that. I, you know, I, By the I, way, I do we, still have your regime change buttons. I did uh, like that. Right, <laughs> and, and, and let me also tell you that I've been part of a group uh, in Evanston. We've adopted uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And we will be uh, going over there on a regular basis for uh, uh, Barack Obama oh, and okay. uh, hoping to win over the hearts and minds of people to get them to the caucuses to help Barack. I, I think that this is one of the most exciting times to be from Illinois because we have a chance 
to, to have the next president of the United States be somebody who we know, somebody who probably has been on your show, has been here. Actually, and, and, no. And, well, 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 well we should get I'll him here. Him. I, I agree. Yeah, but, but, you know, Senator Obama, is. it's just remarkable how much hope he gives people. Mm -hmm. And so we've been working really hard, Senator Schoenberg and Representative Hamos and Congresswoman Schakowsky uh, and Representative Lang. Uh, you know, we've been trying to do all kind of things to help Barack Obama's campaign. Very good. Um, let's talk about the state a little bit. Good. Well, you know, one, one of the things that's... One of the things I just want to tell people, you've been very good about helping people with their real estate tax and problems and appealing and all that. So, of course, that's what we're uh, leading up to here. Right. Well, you know, right now I'm disheartened that we have this stalemate going on in Springfield. And I hope by the time this plays, people will have seen a resolution of it. I sure so one of the so. things that has to happen is the 7%... Uh, assessment cap has got to be extended. Now, Speaker Madigan put forth a proposal which he's explained to me and which I, I support because it, it will give us a long-term homeowner's po uh, protection and we'll as a county have to pass it. What it will what mean is that if you're in your home 10 years or more and your household income is under $75,000, you will have an absolute cap of 7% on your assessment. That's not 7% on your taxes. 7% on your assessment per year. That's all it could go up. And I think that that will handle about 50% of the people who are homeowners in, in our county and it will help, help the people who are on fixed incomes and the people who really need this the most and who in gentrification are being forced out. I, you know, I, your, your bungalow, which is a great house, is on a block where just a block away they've built four or five Five new McMan huge. McMansions yeah. that are, you know, are the, the price of those is, is maybe three times what the price of this is, and that has an impact. And we can't let people like yourself and, and your neighbors here be driven out of their own neighborhood. So we've got to do something, and I'm hopeful that the state will do that. I'm also hopeful the state will come up with a, with a, a budget that will assist us in, in being able to provide health care and educational services and housing services. Um, uh, though that would it, be nice. It, 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 <laughs> transportation it, services. Transportation, the CTA. Yeah, I, mean, I ride the CTA the all the time. And Same year. And if we don't, uh, if, if we're not careful, we're going to lose buses. We're going to lose the Evanston Express, the Skokie Swift. I mean, the, the impact California of, bus up yeah, here. The impact on uh, service that will be cut is greater on our area than any other part yeah, of the city. By the way, the Lund bus also, the 85A up central. I mean, your whole district is going to lose its bus Well, service. one of the things I was told is that the CTA made its cuts by looking at those buses that didn't run on Saturdays and Sundays, and many of those are the buses we're talking about. And, and, and the reason they don't run on Saturdays and Sundays is because they're, they're not needed on Saturdays and Sundays, but they're needed Monday through Friday. Yeah, you know, it's funny because what I was thinking, of, the next time I, 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 we shoot here, I'm going to invite Ron Huberman here. He's but a I'll neighbor. Him, and right. I'll invite him to come in the evening when you can't get public transportation. Because he, he only <laughs> travels now by bus. I know. I like that. I, I happen to like the guy a lot. I really. I think he's a very, competent, him, very competent guy, and I, I, I wish him well. But So my hope is that, that by the time this plays, Springfield will have put all these things together. Mm -hmm. And, again, I, I just want to say to anybody out there who has any county issues, don't hesitate to call my office. We're at 820 Davis. We're downtown in the county building. Sufferton.org is our website. Our phone number in Evanston is 847-864-1209. And Karen Chavers, who runs my Evanston office, and I look forward to working with you. Yeah, she's, she's nice to work with. I've, I've dealt with her more than a couple times, and she's mm -hmm. terrific. And very friendly, very friendly, very knowledgeable people in your office. I'll give you credit for that. And I'm lucky to share offices with Congresswoman Schakowsky, Senator Schoenberg, and Representative Hamos. So we're kind of a mini civic center. If you come there and you have a state, a federal, or a county issue, we'll be able to try and help you with it. It'll definitely work. And that's, uh, now, do you still have an office on Morsi Avenue? Or? Well, what we did is we turned the, uh, because of the county budget, I couldn't continue to pay the rent on oh. Morris Avenue. So what we did is we worked out a deal, and, and Harry Oskerman and I are helping Ceasefire, which has now moved in there. I know Ceasefire. And, and, yeah. and, and I think Ceasefire will be very helpful to Morris Avenue. I'm disappointed that we couldn't keep that office going, but I'm, I'm very you happy that... You don't have the money. You don't have the money. I'm very happy that, that that office is in productive use and something positive for the community. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, Morris Avenue definitely needs some, some shaking up, but hopefully that some of that stuff is going to be happening. Um, hey, we still got... Um, we still got a little bit of time, very little time, but uh, any other issues real quick? Well, you know, I think people should understand because we're moving the primary up to February 5th, that means that you're going to hear about candidates running for other offices. And while the presidential race will take the, the majority of the candidates, 
Uh, Dick Devine's office is up, and he, hopefully he's running for re-election, a, a great state's attorney from the neighborhood here. We hope so. Uh, just a few Gene, away. Gene Moore is up. Larry Rogers is not in our area, but in the Board of Review, he's the commissioner Speaking that's up. about what's up, up, too, is also at this point our time is about okay. up. But we want to thank you very All much. All right. Well, thank Larry you. Larry Sufferton, thanks, Sonny. And uh, next segment.